Well, hello there. I am so glad we get to hang out in this little corner of the online world. I'm Hannah Hermanson, certified coach, international speaker, author, and founder of Dream Life and Real Life. I've helped hundreds of coaches build, scale, and enjoy their online businesses. Essentially, make their dream life their real life. So welcome to the Dream Life is Real Life podcast. In these shows, you'll find the real people, concrete tactics, and weekly motivation and inspiration to make your dream life your real life. Look, I started this podcast to bring you the role models I never have. All right. It looks like we are live in a living color here um, with my friend and expert Instagram and artist and so many wonderful things. Um, Silly. Silly Mugo is a Instagram guru and full-time artist. And I know she also does some business coaching for other folks that want to achieve similar things to her. So welcome to the show, Silly. So glad to have you in this capacity. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to reconnect with you and uh, be on here. I know. Yeah. For a while there, we were meeting every week when we you were in the program. And it's been a minute since we've been yeah. face-to-face. So this is a delight. <laughs> and I'm really yes, excited definitely. for you to be able to share some of your expertise and growth with um, other folks who are looking to make more sales on social media, get their artwork into the world or whatever that that gift is. And I know you've got a lot of tools for that. First, though, I'd love for you to share a little bit about what got you here to be making beautiful art um, and using Instagram to achieve all sorts of wild dreams. You know, how, how did you get to be where you're at? So um, I love this this question because it's such a funny story how I started. I was working uh, at my corporate job. I was working a nine to five. And I remember I went to a leadership conference in Atlanta. I'll never forget because there was a keynote speaker there. And she gave such an encouraging message about like overcoming adversity and really putting yourself out there. And not letting what society or what your family or your friends say is possible stop you from really going after your dreams. So she's she went on Shark Tank. And so that was really what caught my attention. I was like, wow. And she I she's believe she got an investor. Yeah, she's <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So I remember it was right after because you know, these leadership events, they have like cocktail hour and they get you, I don't know why, but I feel like they get you a little tipsy before you go into like these um sessions. And so we we had cocktail hour right before and I remember I always say this I'm like I sobered up when I realized I need to do something different like I was in a leadership yeah. position at my job they sent me out for additional training and you know little did they know my mind just literally just opened up and I remember I ran back to my uh, hotel room and I literally sobered up I was like writing down all these things but mm-hmm. I really ne- I knew that I had passion and I needed to be able to do it at my own time, Mm -hmm. in my own way, and have that freedom of really being able to like chase after, you know, my purpose and chase after Mm -hmm. my dream. And in that moment, I knew what I was doing in corporate America just was not my purpose. So I went back home. Yeah. And I just was like, Oh, my God. Oh my God. And I started thinking, okay, so what can I do that I really love? (laughs) Don't want to interrupt. But I think this is so important to highlight that aha moment, right? When you're on a certain path, you think you're doing the right thing. Everyone's telling you you're where you should be, right? The big nasty S word of those shoulds. And maybe even you've tricked yourself into liking your job or getting these leadership roles, like you said. Um, But when you sober up and have that aha moment and really look at your strengths and your talents and what you actually want to be doing, like, I think that is so relatable because each of us have it in some capacity. And it's the people like you who answer that calling that get to get to make it their real life. And so if anyone out there listening thinks they've had their aha moment, like I'm just going to tell you, like, it's probably worth listening to if you kind of sort of think maybe. Um, And if you you definitely listen to it, you could probably remember your moment and relate. So I, I love that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I definitely it was it was a very clear aha moment for me because then I knew, okay, so I'm going to go back home. 
And then you you really start to think, what can I do that I am passionate about, that I love to do, but I also can make money from it. And for me, it's always been mm-hmm. art. I've always been into art. Uh, but I was, I was chasing after that corporate ladder, like you said, the shoulds, right? Like I should be, um, you know, working in corporate America and climbing the corporate ladder. But I really decided, hey, you know what? I, I really needed to chase my dreams. So I started on Instagram simply with no followers. I literally had no sales. I had it, it literally started from zero and just mm-hmm. started to put myself out there, post my art and slowly post my story and, you know, just connect with people on in a genuine level. And, you know, and that's really where it all started. It just started from putting myself out there on Instagram and really just believing like there are people out there. There are my people out there who are going to appreciate the art that I'm creating. So that's yeah. really where it all started. It's the best start method. Like just start putting stuff out there, right? Like we don't yeah. always know the exact next steps or how it's all going to happen or where you're going to be in five years from now. Like it doesn't necessarily work that way. Um, but that just started. Right, method. right. It's so powerful. When was that? Yes. How many years and ago did I, you do that? So that was in the fall of 2017. It was actually, I launched my shop on the Saturday after Black Friday. So yeah, it was 2017. And uh, was I ready? Absolutely not. But I started my Etsy shop. And and I had maybe about 15 or 20 listings on there. But I just, I just was like, I set a date, and I decided to do it. And and that was that. So yeah, that start is really like, I feel like after that, you can only go up from there, but you just have to start. You just have to start. Right, right. Well, I'm excited to dig in with you because you have a really interesting perspective from making it art sales. So selling middle to high ticket master pieces, um, also selling services on Instagram with some of your coaching and consulting that you do. Um, And also, I'm pretty sure you do some like affiliate or like some network marketing, like smaller products. And you've been able to sell all these different types of things um, with some of the same strategies, the same exact platform, the same exact profile. Um, So many times people ask me like, do I need a business account? Should I start a different thing with a different last name, whatever. Um, So I would Mm -hmm. love to kind of dive into how, how that's possible. Like what is your formula or method for being able to convert on a very noisy platform? Yeah. So I love that you said that um, because it is, it's very noisy. It's like the word people like to use is saturated, right? Um, There's over a billion people just on Instagram alone, right? So my The way that I look at it, and this is something that I've tried over and over again, this is how I teach my clients who are creatives how to really show up on Instagram, is that no, like long, long gone are the days where you just like posted pretty pictures on Instagram and that had all of these people start to follow you and buy from you. That's not what it's about anymore. It's really all about storytelling now. And the way to do that is to really balance how you show up as as opposed to your products and services. So it's like a balance of selling, storytelling, and serving, right? And this is what I call the BAR method. And the way that I break it down, what the BAR really stands for is number one thing people need to know as soon as they come on your profile, just based on your content. Because content, just let me back up a second. Content, the the whole purpose of content on Instagram and just social media in general is to number one, connect you with your audience. I connect you with your potential customers And number two, to sell, like there's those two things. Those are the two things that content really does, right? So the bar method, the way it's set up is the B stands for being a boss. Let me explain what that means. Your content, when you think about showing up as a boss on Instagram and on social media in general, do people think of you as an expert when they come to your page or do they just think it's just like a fun hobby that you're doing? Because this is what differentiates you from Being a boss means that you show up, you look like an expert, you actually know what you're doing. You have some examples of boss content would be you in progress, like actually creating, actually editing. If you're like a photographer, for example, you're you're showing behind the scenes and a lot of the editing software that you use, things like that. Because then people are like, oh, wow, she's actually a big deal. Like she knows what she's doing. So that's the difference. And that's what really sets you apart. So that you don't have this problem, because a lot of creatives say this all the time. How do I get people to actually don't not want to ask stuff for free 
from me, right? People right. actually want to pay money and buy from me. This is how you do it. You right. show up as a boss, right? That's the number show one thing. So boss. that's the bar. Yep. So that's the yeah. B and, and bar. The, the behind the scenes hack. I think that's really great. And for like coaches and consultants, this could be like talking about what just happened with one of your clients. Like you have clients, like mention that. Um, and another yes. thing I recently told another client was like, all right, two quick ways to establish yourself as the expert or the boss in this method, right? Number yeah. one, say you're the boss. Say you are an expert, right? Yeah. Like tell people this is what I do. Put it in your profile. And then second would be to like um, what you're saying, silly, like show them. Well, I would say it like cite facts that they don't mm -hmm. know. So you're saying right. you could cite like this is the software I use or for coaches or service providers. It's like, here's a fact. This is how much most coaches get paid according to Glassdoor. Or this is how many people fail in business every year. Like citing right. facts is another way to do that, that bossness, especially if you're just starting out. Right. Right, right. And even so if you if you're selling products, a great way to show your boss mess, right, is showing um, yourself going to the post office and mailing products out. That's a way to show like, hey, I'm making sales. Right. Or one thing I love to do is I'll post every Monday because I get the most sales on the weekends. I'll post where my where I'm shipping you know, art too. And that's a really great awareness thing. So people are like, oh, wow, she's selling. So like, I got to take her seriously, right? So that's the first thing is um, the B, so the boss. The A is for being authentic. And I can't, can't say this enough, especially like you said, there's so much noise on social media. There are so many people who are doing the same thing. Right now, I can pull up probably a hundred artists who create the same exact things that I do. A hundred artists who became coaches and coach other creatives. There are so many people. But what sets you apart from everyone else and connects you, right, I, to your ideal customer is how you show up authentically as your true self, using your voice, telling your story. And this doesn't mean you have to tell your whole life story and get into this whole you know, soap opera. Just tell your story of as simple as some examples, right? Some actionable um, examples that you can use to be authentic is uh, give your origin story. How did you come upon starting your business? What is your why? What made you decide, okay, I'm going to start this thing that this is actually going to be my thing. Like what's inspiring you to create if you're creative, right, what inspired you? If you're a coach, then it's really important for people to know why you decided to teach and to empower and to get into that place. Like for me, transitioning from artist to coach, people have to know that. So that's really showing up authentically and explaining your origin story. That's such an important part of what I see missing in a lot of um, content online is that people don't know mm -hmm. why you decided it, you know, why do you do this? Right. Or what inspires yeah. you? What motivates you? So that's a really practical way of showing up authentically is really just. And the thing is, is with authenticity is that there is no there are no two people who have the same story. If you really think about it, we all are so unique in that way. So that's a good way to set yourself apart when everything is so similar yeah. online. Um, and then yeah, the last thing, it. yeah, I'm sorry, go oh, ahead. Sorry. One piece on, on the authenticity, because sometimes I hear people get like, worried that if they're vulnerable it'll be too hard to post or it'll upset someone and I think that is a really great hack of your origin story because that's super authentic and can't piss anyone off or like you know hurt too bad um because right. I know a lot of times people get worked up about like sharing too much or being too this or that when we talk about authenticity they know it's important but they don't know how so I right. love this highlighting piece relevant pieces of your story what got you into business? Why you do what you do? Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Or even just like simply like, how did it feel when you made your first sale? Like when you realize mm -hmm. like, oh, wow, people are actually willing to spend money on me. Oh my God. You know what I mean? Like that's, yeah. that's really authentic right there. Cause everyone has a different experience on how they felt when that happens. Right. Um, and then the last thing in the bar method is R, which is relatable. And when you think about being relatable online, people are, especially right now, now, this year, with everything that's, that's going on, people mm -hmm. are online more than ever. Mm -hmm. People are seeking connections. People are making BFFs on Instagram. I can't tell you how many people we are literally, I can personally tell you we're BFFs, including you, Hannah. Like, we're BFFs. I consider that because it's right. like you're in yeah. each other's business. You're liking each other's stories all day. And it's like you'll post the 
funniest right. pun memes and I'm just dying laughing. I want to so, know what relatability being like sending the <laughs> right. right. Like kombucha, <laughs> like when yeah. <laughs> so when you think about relatability, that's really important. And I'll tie together why how all these three things tie together when it comes to sales. Because when you think about it, relatability is the me too thing where it's like, oh my God, you're going through that. Like I feel the same way, especially when it comes to just current events. Or um, I always say like, if you're a mom, there are a lot of moms who would probably draw towards you because of hashtag like, you know, mom life or mom struggles or whatever the case may be. Memes, really great way to be relatable. So people get to know what your sense of humor is like and what you really consider funny and not funny. I love and your meme. There's so many things that start great conversations. Right. Yeah, you would be surprised. I sometimes post a business-related post in my stories and I don't get as much engagement as I do a meme. And a meme will start those conversations that do end up then being sales conversations, right? Yeah. But it's really yeah. how you start those conversations. So that's the bar method. It's be a boss, be authentic, and be relatable. Once you have that in cycle in your content, right, you're showing up as a boss, you're authentic, you're relatable, and you just keep posting over and over again, those three types of content. That's how you build that know, like, and trust factor. And people are then ready. As soon as you launch that thing, or you have that thing ready for sale, it's not a question. It's like, okay, I already know her. She's my home girl. Like, I got to I got to get what she's selling, right? So that's really how it all ties together and drives sales when you post those three types of content consistently right yeah what you're really talking about or what I'm thinking about is branding right everyone thinks branding is like a logo your aesthetics your font type but really it's that process of getting to know you of being part of the client journey of like oh my god we both love kombucha and oh my god look at her amazing art and now I trust her and I like her and I'm already chatting with her about kombucha um that's branding right right? fostering that know like and trust in complete strangers that have happen to find you because of a hashtag, right? Yeah, right, it makes right. sales so much easier. Absolutely, so, absolutely. Question for so, you. yeah, that is, yeah. Yeah. Question for you, when it comes to making sales, I know this is something we worked on together and I think there were a lot of shifts you learned in the difference between like selling a product for, you know, X amount of dollars versus selling like a high ticket, um, service, right? A little less tangible, uh, maybe a little more expensive, but you're still, again, using these same strategies and conversations. So what, what do you know? You know, what are some of the differences between products and services selling them? If so any. I think with, yeah, so I think there's a lot of similarities in that you gain that no like, and trust factor. Those are both like, those have to both be there for products or services. I think the biggest thing with services is that your boss content really needs to be heavy in that people you have credibility so people see you as an expert not only on what you do and like how you make money online but then also that you're able to teach them so the content in that case then becomes teaching and tutorials and really showing up as um, someone who they can look up to to and learn from because then it be- makes it really easy to transition them into hey you've gotten a little taste here's how I can work with you to really transform your business or transform your life or whatever the case may be right. so it's more of a journey with services but the journey really starts with that boss content of like really showing that credibility right. and the fact that you're a pure expert in in what you're doing so that would be the yeah. biggest biggest um, difference that definitely makes sense. You just need to push that trust a little bit more, right? Right. Um, yeah. I would, imagine, yep. I would imagine, and the way I think about sales, you know, we've worked on your sales conversations together, is that bar method maps directly onto the entire sales process. So content is just the top of the sales process, right? right. Like, I'm interested. I might click on the. You know, it's like if you're on Amazon, like you type in what you're looking for and you just kind of start looking at the content that's available. Right. But then you move to like get more in depth, maybe on a sales call, like on Amazon, like more of the product description. Um, and in that conversation, in that product description or helping a prospect make a decision to buy your service or, or not, I would imagine you need to be the boss. 
right? Have that boss frame through the whole sales conversation and be authentic, right? Be honest with people if they're a good fit or not. Um, and then also be relatable, like show that right. you have the outcomes. Like I, I can relate to you because I've worked with people like you or this works for me. Right. Would you agree with that? Yes, absolutely. And I think what the bow that I would put on top of that as well and something that I learned specifically from you, because I remember you had to read a lot of what I was writing <laughs> is copy. Like your copy is so important because it's people are reading it in your voice, number one, but also it's speaking to someone with, you know, and like you said, content starts the journey. It starts the customer journey. So when I think about copy and like writing copy and writing captions and writing emails, any type of content where you're, it's, it's in writing, um, really having to think through what that sounds like to your customer is so important. And I, I know that's one thing that I learned like super duper <laughs> when I worked with you was just really making sure to sound um, like how I want to be perceived on the other end, if that makes sense. So like when you read that con that copy, does it sound like I would want to work with you? Like, does it mm -hmm. sound like I would want you to be my coach? And if it doesn't, then that's when you go back to the drawing board or you, you know, you, you find a coach like Hannah and you're like, Hey, listen, <laughs> I need help here. Yeah. But that's really, that copy is such a powerful part of content and just really, especially when it comes to those high ticket clients and starting that journey, that copy is such an important part of the process. Yeah. Yeah. When I, I'll give a, a hack, I I'm sure I shared with you. I share with everyone, especially um, when you're having conversations, right? So one formula, you guys can write this down, but like one formula for sales is, you know, they see your content and then you can invite them to a conversation, right? So they go from content to conversation, like in the DMs or whatever. Um, and when I'm talking about DMs, sorry, let me finish the formula. Content, conversation, conversion. Okay. I want to just reiterate this. Like it doesn't go from like, I see you drinking coffee to like, I just go buy it without talking to you unless you are Chrissy Teigen. Okay. So, right. or Madonna, right? So you need content, conversation, then conversion. And the conversation, what Silly's talking about, like in the messaging or going back and forth, like read it from the other side of the screen, right? How many of you have gotten salesy DMs that are like, hey, Hannah, I love what you're doing. How's the business side of things? And I'm like, are you a business coach? Like, why are you asking me this? Or, you know, just curious if you'd like to do a side opportunity, blah, blah, blah. Like, those salesy DMs. So you don't want to be that person. So you have to think about how it's being perceived on the other side, like Silly saying, right? Like, would I respond to what I'm about to put out? Does this reflect right. how I want to be heard? Right? Because so often we just get into our like, all right, got to get this out, like pitch, 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 or post, post, post. And we have to take that moment, you know, to reflect or get someone else's eyes on it to make sure that um, it's being received, not just being pushed. Right. Absolutely. Beautiful. Well, um, this was amazing. I hope people are like taking notes or saving this because you're going to want to go back and, you know, memorize the bar method and memorize the three C's um, because this is a lot, a lot of gems for like we talked about product services, affiliate opportunities that you might be doing. Um, one, one last question for you, uh, because I know you, you mentioned your aha moment or the beginning yeah. of your journey. And as much as you've had success and it looks dazzling and beautiful and everything has got a bow tied on it, like you said, there were probably moments that were difficult that you wondered, like, is this for me? What am I doing? So I would love to know if you could look back at to beginning your business um, or really starting to put yourself out there. What advice would you have given yourself, former version of yourself? Okay, so I love this question because I just thought about it earlier today, actually. Oh, funny. I would have celebrated every single win. I had small of a win or as big of a win, I would have celebrated it way more. And and not compared myself with, you know, with everyone. So it's like every every milestone I would have really yeah. taken the time to be in such like drown myself in gratitude and just celebrate. I would mm -hmm. celebrate way more. And now I try my best to do that with everything. But yeah, if there's one thing I would say for anyone starting out or if you are in the beginning stages or even the middle stages and you don't do this, right. 
honestly, having that gratitude moment of like celebrating every single win, how small or big it is, is a game changer. It's a complete oh, game changer. So, you know, I am with you. I actually remember <laughs> so well because you had one of my favorite celebrations so one of the first things in my program is to like celebrate like you're doing this like mark this as a big day because it's it's a decision big decision for sure and you and your mom had like the white claws and like yes. special dinner <laughs> like you went all out and I was like this girl can celebrate like we we're yes. gonna work well together <laughs> yeah every every single moment every win needs a celebration yeah. your first sale celebration your first email subscriber celebration Whatever it first is, it no, just, yeah, amazing. your first no, it's like, you know what? This is what I learned. Celebration. So it's like exactly. every single step needs a celebration. So I love that. Yeah. Ugh, okay. I love that advice. I'm going to hear it <laughs> and take it for myself as well. Um, well, we all want to keep celebrating and hanging out with you. So where's a good place for folks to get connected or follow you? Absolutely. So I am on Instagram literally way more than I need to be. Um, I'm at Silly Mugo. Um, and also my website is sillymugoart.com. So you can see some of my art and see some of what I uh, offer as far as services on there as well. Yeah, I'll make sure we get links to all of that. We so appreciate you, your beauty and your wisdom sharing all of this with us. I definitely hope people continue the conversation with you over <laughs> on Instagram or your website. And friends, I will continue to be back with more of these inspiring and implementable conversations here um, in the Dream Life is Real Life world because I'm really on a mission to help you see the role models that might not be in front of you, right? Some of us are quarantined and that's one thing. Some of us grew up in small town Wisconsin and had no idea how to do any of this, like me. Uh, um, so I really just want to bring in experts and voices that can help you move forward on the journey to that dream life, that dream business, um, and living life on your own terms. So stay tuned. I will see you all next time. All right. And that's a wrap for our Dream Life is Real Life show today. Thank you for hanging out with me, Hannah Hermanson, and our inspiring community here. Be sure to visit dreamlifeisreallife.com slash show to get all of the resources and more that we talked about today so that you can keep building, scaling, and enjoying your dream life and business. Until next time.